Shem Salat, the Kudim is so fun, mademoiselle. Uh, folks, we're outside of the Game Express here on uh, 3rd Avenue and 118th Street in East Harlem, New York. And this is actually one of my favorite topics, is vintage gaming. I mean, I kind of grew up on this stuff. And I remember reading an article years ago. You know, not a whole lot of people are going to remember uh, the best times playing Tekken 4 or Mortal Kombat 9 or 10 or whatever the fuck. But, you know, Donkey Kong, Miss Pac-Man, Nintendo, Atari, and television, Fairchild Channel F, Vectrex. Well, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I don't know if a lot of these units are any longer available today. But this store is actually one of the few places that I like to go, talk to the guys, and check out some old school games. And it's not to say that they only have old school, they have new school. But, you know, regardless of what your choice of flavor is, on the season or the month or the week, let's go inside. So here we are, please the door. This time I rehearsed so I'm not getting confused between the two doors. Let's go inside. Ah, uh, yes. Give me just a second. Ah, so now we're inside this lascivious den of depravity and here we have one of the local denizens. What's your name, sir? Joshua. Joshua, Pablo? And he's the founder of Joshua Tree. You are a big aficionado of old school games and apparently a proficient uh, gamer yourself. Can you tell us some of the ideas of what you see the industry going and what you like, don't like, what you see is going on perhaps? Well, I guess mostly negative thoughts towards the gamers, but the positive end is mostly towards the corpse. Um, although they do spend a lot more money on the gamers compared to the last generation, people mm -hmm. are working to it. I guess they could use the actual book with the, the way they do in the games. Mm -hmm. Do you see any kind of a different orientation in team gaming, individual, online play, phone app gaming, any kind of thematics or lack thereof or underlying uh, directions in games? I mean, maybe it's too many questions all in one shot. I mean, would you say you enjoy gaming today more or less than you did five years ago? And if you do, why or why not? I really don't enjoy the concept as much as back in the days where gaming is more interaction with other people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the internet online gaming kind of takes away from that. Instead of going to the same house playing with a friend, you mm -hmm. play with the friend so far, far away though. Well, some people might say it's a good thing because you're playing with people whom you'll never see and probably never will see. Some people might say it's a bad thing because they're not really your friend, they're just an abstract entity with a corresponding avatar. It's a double-edged sword, of, right? Sort of a double-edged sword, I guess. Well, it's not 100% negative. No, no, it's not necessarily. Progress is somewhere. Some people might say it's backwards, forward, sideways, upside down. Is there a particular genre of games you like or don't like? I'm not a big fan of horror games. Mm -hmm. That's like the only genre that I don't touch. What do you like? What's your favorite game? Well, my favorite game, I um, don't really have much of a favorite like the moment city for me. Mm -hmm. I play just any other genre of games. Ah. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know you're standing in front of the old Genesis then uh, here. The old Genesis, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, these are the emulators for the NES, so it's NES 30, which is like the Super Nintendo. You have the Genesis Sega here. Oh yes, I have to get back in the picture with Joshua. Mm -hmm. And you have the Hydra, the virtual reality headset. Can you imagine yourself wearing a Hydra? You'll be like the Nazi organization in Captain America, Hydra, cut one off, cut one head off, two grows. Imagine how many heads you'd have. I do picture virtual reality being in the future of gaming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, like, uh, without using the control, you're just interacting with the game. That's cool. a extremely good concept, although only a few games compatible with virtual reality today. Yeah, the problem is a lot of them don't execute it very well. It's like Virtua Fighter had a problem with their polygon processors. That problem was still present in Virtua Fighter 2. I don't believe there was a Virtua Fighter 3. Yes? No, hmm. oh, the Virtua Fighter 3, mm, that's, I remember that's a Dreamcast title. Mm -hmm. Virtua Fighter 3? Was there a Virtua Fighter 3? Apparently I missed it. I could have been out of the country. What I was going to say was if you see here, mm -hmm. there's Retron 24. I'm sorry, Retron 3, which is 2.4 gigahertz. 
these are all Retron 4. There was a Retron, I'm sorry, Retron 3. There was a Retron 4 and a Retron 5 that actually combined a lot of various platforms onto one game, but there was a problem, right, with the crossover of the processors. You have the Superboy S here, which is like a miniature, right, Super Nintendo, and it probably actually takes the original Super Nintendo carts. Hmm. Let's go look at the rest of the store. Ah, uh, yeah, let's go see. Thank you very much, Joshua. I yes. wish you luck in your endeavors. Thank you very yes. so much. See ya. We have the Wii 2 games here, but that's hardly old school, or it might soon become old school. And we have the PS4 over there. Yeah. We have the comfort grip sets, the little uh, aluminum armor cases here, the 3DO games from Fire Emblem to Dream Trigger to Steel Diver, Zelda, and Monster Hunter. Uh, more Nintendo DS games here, more miniature controllers from Freedom to GameCube. Yes, oh, I'm sorry. Well, no, I'm just looking at everything. I'm trying to take it. The ambiance, the ambiance. And ah, ah, here we have the dedicated store goers and, and the procurers. One of whom is on the phone, the other one of whom is here playing with one of the people who go to the store a lot. Yes, you go to the store a lot. I don't recall the last time I was in here and didn't see you. Can you look away at the camera for a second? What's your name, sir? Troy. Torrance? Troy. Oh, Charlie, Charlie. And you are? Troy. Oh, Troy. And you are? Uh, Jimmy. Jimmy, Troy and Jimmy. And where do you guys see the direction of gaming going today? Digital. Digital. And what about you, Troy? Same. What about the virtual reality versus phone app aspects of gaming? Say that again? The, what about the difference between like uh, phone apps and the idea that people are going to be moving away from things like PS, like handhelds to all phone app games for that kind of thing, and then virtual reality being the major component on your home stations? I personally don't think mobile gaming is going to take off like that. It's definitely a good time waster, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But I mean, for the casual fans, it's good because if you know, if you need like some sort of entertainment, going to work or whatever, then it's fine. Mm -hmm. But I still prefer a handheld over a, over a mobile device. You could only do so much with virtual controls. Mm -hmm. That's true. I think a lot of it is still abroad today, and it'll be quite a while before it actually replaces a lot of the traditional platforms. It's like when we went into uh, the polygon processing of 3D, it still wasn't as good as the two-dimensional ones. No, of course. Spike yeah. will always look Yeah, yeah, Spice. Better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> There's something magical about it. What about, you have anything to say about old-school gaming? That it's still the best part of gaming, pretty much. It's still awesome. Like, there's nothing out at this point that you could consider a classic. Really? Well, I don't think so. Not it depends yet. what you mean, like from the 90s or from the 80s. I mean, we are in 2017. What about you, Troy? Do you like any old school games? I love old school games. That's what they're that fighting. Isn't hardly an old school game compared to Zombie no, this Kong like, and Miss Pac. Yeah. <laughs> this is more like... This is like Bronze Age. Yeah, this yeah. is Bronze Age. It's like the Bronze Age of comics. I mean, for somebody who was exactly. born in the 80s, the 70s comics are old school. For somebody who was born in the 80s, 60s, and 70s. Mm -hmm. You know, for somebody who was growing up in the 70s, it's the 50s comics, and then there are people who remember them from the 30s, right? It's relative yeah. in that regard. Mm -hmm. The yeah. NES started the golden age of games. Which one? Uh, the NES started... Oh, the, the NES, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. the golden age. Before that was the silver age. I thought it actually went from the Stone Age when there were no centralized processors like hyperspace, like the, I'm sorry, the computer space that was available in the universities. It was like $30,000 in 70s money. And then after the Stone Age was the Golden Age, and then the Silver Age, and then the Bronze Age, and then there's the Space Age. Because I think it, the Golden Age came before the Silver Age. It's like with comic books, the, gold, the Golden Age comic books were in the 30s and 40s. The Silver Age were in the early 60s, and then the Bronze Age started in the 70s. I guess I guess it started from the Odyssey Magna Box all the way to the Clico edition. This may be considered that pre-Golden Age. That's yeah, why gaming was the concept was considered. Well, to me, you know, the first color, truly color video game was Galaxian. And before that was Star Castle. But that was actually done with some sort of overlays. And it actually has no it had no processor per se. 
and had a series of RNF switches or something like that. I don't recall exactly what they were. But it wasn't a genuine processor and it wasn't a genuine color game. It had the overlays like on the Vectrex. Have you ever seen the Vectrex? Whoa! Really? Yeah. 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 It's a, seen a lot of yeah, yeah. It's a specialized unit. Well, what I did want to do is basically call the attention is that the games have become a lot more sophisticated today, and there's a much greater variety. But at the same time, and also become harder to produce. At the same time, a lot of requirements go to these games. Before then, it was easier to make a game than to make a movie. Yes. Yeah, sure. Now Grand Theft Auto Five took what? One hundred fifty million? Yeah. Or half a billion? Yeah, and now movie has become easier to make than games. Hmm? Sure. Depends on the movie, depends on the game. Let's come a long way. Mm -hmm. Let's go over and talk. What's his name? I forgot. Oh, that's Sean. Yeah. Sean, okay. Thank you for your Sean. Were you winking or blinking? Were you uh, winking or blinking, man, bro? Come on, confess. You were winking like or blinking. <laughs> this is sort of the unofficial part, too, because there was a problem with the system, so we had to put a break. Just... Okay, fine, it doesn't Sean. matter. Sean is one of the people here gainfully employed as opposed to some of the other folks just hanging out and chilling and willing and dealing. Yeah. Some of whom cleared out since they saw they were being taken on video, but perhaps being an intelligent, well-informed, yes, directed man, he can tell us about some ideas of what he sees in old school gaming and new school gaming going on today and what's going on in the store and in the neighborhood in general. Yes, I know, a little brickloads and shitloads on you, but that's all right, I don't mind. <laughs> no. How long has this store been here? Quite some time, actually. It seems like a long before I even. How long have you been here? I think it was like more than twenty years. More than twenty years. More than twenty years. So no, I mean, no, no, no. The store, like this yeah, store yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, more than twenty years. Well, that's what I'm back saying. So this. 90s. Yeah. So this store back in the early '90s was selling games from the '80s. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. assuming because if it was partially about retro games and some of it is new school games. Yeah. Then what was, you know, old school 20 years ago was even older than that. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I'm serious. I mean, think about it. It probably goes back to the heat kits. I don't think anybody was selling those. Oh. But I hold you. Wow. 25. 20, you're 25? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was going to ask. Nineteen? No, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I was just gonna ask you what you thought about old school games. How they differed from the school, uh, from the games of today? Because we were talking to Joshua back there, and what he noticed was yeah, that. <laughs> that's all right. You know, opinions are many, the money's a few. But he was saying that, <laughs> yeah, games today cost more money to make than movies, and some movies are cheaper than games. So big great films are always around. The games have gotten very complicated. But there was a fellow who just came in and he just brought a stock of the NES games. You know, yeah. uh, the Nintendo games. There was Spelunker in there, there was Karate Champ, there was Schwarzenegger's Predator, right? There was a whole bunch of other stuff in there too. And But for some people, Nintendo is old. Like some people like their Intellivision or Vetrex or Atari or IC2 or, yeah, Fairchild Channel Left and the really old school TRS 80. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's going back to the early 80s. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I keep on stepping out of the frame. I'm sorry. I'm laying out a lot of questions. Okay, because. Where do you see the video game industry going today? Where do I see it going? Well, basically the state that it's in right now, especially with a lot of companies, i.e. Capcom, mm -hmm. um, it's all about money. Sure. It's not about like the, the art of making a good game anymore. It's no. all about micro transactions, uh, DLCs, like these companies will split a game in half and charge you for the half of it, but it's more going in that direction. So it's game is not what it's used to be. No, Back it's not. then it was fun, it was great. Now it's a yeah, business. Yeah, sure. It's how much money a company can make. And every company needs to make money to survive, absolutely. But dude, where's it all? When it comes to the part of you practically fleecing your customers on a game, like, you know, it's, it's just sad, honestly. You know, I've noticed like it started really in phone app games and game purchases and stuff like that. But I've noticed that even now Xbox and stuff has sort of like you can buy stuff for your avatars and stuff like that. Do you think that um, in game purchases are going to be moving on to the big like Xbox and PlayStation kind of thing? Stationary platform games, yes. 
Oh, absolutely. There's a market for it, and basically, if, if it's grown, like, these companies can see, well, yeah, you know, I can sell you like an item for clothes or for you know for whatever thing is. Absolutely, I can see it being viable. They do it a lot, like even cell phone games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What was they talking about? The phone app, yeah. Like, for instance, Candy Crush. Mm -hmm. I've heard people drop in hundreds of dollars in that. Some so cases, it's more than hundreds. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so, absolutely, I definitely agree with that. Right? Yeah, I'll see that coming to pass. No problem at all. And what about the idea that, you know, because our phones can do so much more, the that moving away from handheld individual units to just phone app games? Because I heard Sony's new unit is kind of weird. It's not really kind of weird, it just lacks support. Um, my opinion, on a, a phone app game will never replace an actual game system because that's not from the average gamer. Yeah. That's from someone who's going from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. You want to fill a time real quick. So you have cheesy games like Candy Crush and you know Mobile Strike and so on and so forth, which are some of our good and some of just mm -hmm. terrible. But it can't replace oh. that hardcore game like you know yeah. the 3DS for some reason yeah. mm -hmm. lasted more than it should, but whatever. Um, the, ten, the, the Sony, why they failed or fail in all of the cases, just, they just lack support on, the, on Sony's hand, on developers' hands. Mm -hmm. You go to like YouTube and there's hundreds of video, videos explaining in great depth mm -hmm. why it's actually. You know. Yeah. That's happened before when you would have a great unit like the Jaguar, the Atari Jaguar 64, but it had no software support. A lot of that stuff I heard, I don't know if it's true, it was running off the processor and the controller, not the actual game base. Anyway. I, it was around, it was floating around. Anyway, like I said, the opinions are many, the minds are few. Sean certainly seems in tune with this. I do appreciate your time. Yeah, I'm no sorry problem. we kind of crashed on you like a ton of bricks. Yeah, that's cool. I got you know, but better a ton of bricks than a flock of pricks. <laughs> and you and, you and you and Joshua and kind of are. You still want it fatgirls.com or Joshua wants scatgirls.com or was it net.ru? Oh, I don't know. Or was it dot org? I didn't, I didn't mention any website. All right, all right. I was just, I read it on his looks. So he was yeah. shaking all his hips. Hey right, guys, you know, sometimes you got to read between the lines. Sometimes you got to roll with the times. Sometimes you got to drop the dime. Sometimes, well, you got to spook the slimes. So I'm a poet. Don't even know. Sometimes I show it. Sometimes I float. Try not to blow it. Feeling good. Knock on wood. Going back to Hollywood. Boom shaka laka laka. Boom shakalaka, that's what he meant. <laughs> See you guys.